If you've ever wanted to analyze the frame rate of a video recording that you've done, or analyze the frame rate of a video game, of a camera, something like that, such as what I've shown in a couple videos now, such as this video of my Huawei Mate 10 Pro gaming phone playing PUBG Mobile, I got a lot of questions about how I got that frame rate graph and how you analyze frame rate of video games like that. It, uh, there's actually a pretty cool free and open source tool available for this very thing, and we're gonna check it out right after a word from our sponsor. Plex is the media streaming app that beautifully organizes your media collections and lets you securely access them on all your screens. Now with live TV viewing and DVR. Click the link in the video description to learn more. If you've ever watched a Digital Foundry video or I mean, they're pretty much the only ones that do it right and wonder how they get those cool little frame rate analysis graphs on their video. Unfortunately, they use something completely custom, and this has been very frustrating for me. I understand why, but they have developed their own in-house tools that they're constantly revising and do not make public in order to do this. But I have found an open source free tool called Teardrop that lets you do similar functionality. So if you're interested in analyzing uncompressed video to find out the frame rate of the footage, this might be the tool for you. Now, this is still an early alpha. It's super rudimentary, and you have to have completely uncompressed. That means not X264 or H264 via OBS or standard capture card software. It has to be uncompressed, lossless. They refer to it as .raw, which is not how capture card encoding will work, that you, you can't get literal raw video from game consoles. However, you can use a software like Amarec, which can record to uncompressed um, AVI files using a variety of different codecs, or I use my Atomos Ninja Inferno to record to ProRes, which is close enough. I have used it for, I uh, have used this for X264 before, and I will show you some of the results. But you pretty much, you need as raw of a file as possible if you want any remotely realistic numbers. And this only works for up to 60 FPS, and the file header has to actually have the correct target frame rate because if it says like if it has the 1000 fps uh, obs mkv mkv bug then it will think that the target fps is 1000 and kind of freak out so to use this tool you need to go up here to releases and download the zip file or you can build it from source if you know what you're doing extract it you'll get a photo that looks like this this is the file that you will run trdropc.exe this is the file that you will run in order to execute your video, but you have to do a couple things first. First, you need to copy over some footage that you actually want to analyze. So I have this, actually two clips of Horizon Zero Dawn here. I just had them mislabeled. I'm gonna go ahead and cut and paste those. They need to be in the folder unless you're gonna modify the script to work elsewhere. And for example, we're gonna start with hzd.mov. This is recorded in ProRes from my Atomos Ninja Inferno. This is in HDR, so I don't know if it will work. Uh, but we will open, work on this real quick. You want to open this trdrop-config.yaml file. It's a configuration file. You can do some sort of weird double and triple comparisons with it. I have not messed with that a whole heck of a lot. But go ahead and open up that configuration file. And here is where you address your input file. So I'm going to change this to hzd.mp4. This has to be in the directory, no quotes. Space actually quotes if there's spaces might be helpful and then you change the output file name if desired. Now they use the open H.264 codec, which produces an AVI file, and overall Premiere Pro really hates this format. You can't change it as of right now, as far as I'm aware, unless you uh, assume you could maybe modify the source code to change it, but as of the pre-compiled build, you cannot change this, so you will want to transcode your footage because Premiere Pro will not like it at all. Actually, you do have some options here. <laughs> you have DivX and X264 in this open CV format thing. I DivX in 2018, lol. All right, so you have some options here. For the most part, ignore most of this. This is color adjustment of the graph. You can adjust some minor settings of how the graph looks, but you cannot output the graph to a separate PNG overlay or anything like that. It has to re-render the video. But the pixel difference here, this is basically how different each frame has to be. And that is how the software works. In order to show the graph, each frame has to be analyzed and compared to the previous frame. And if it looks exactly the same, it's gonna count it as a duplicate frame. And so there is a value 
for which you can change. By default, it is set to seven as far as how the frames differ. If you set it to zero, it goes really, really fast, but then, you know, your compression may affect that frame rate. I have used seven and that's been mostly reliable. However, because it's working this way, you're gonna end up with weird results if you try to use H.264 or X.264, you know, actually compressed video. For example, I wanted to do a super rudimentary test of this OBS captured file that I knew wasn't exactly 60 FPS, but since it has, you know, there's always compression artifacts going. The actual frame rate of this video is 46.7 FPS, or bouncing between 46 and 7. However, for the most part, it doesn't really know what to do with that. It thinks it's 60 most of the time because there's compression artifacting, you know, affecting how it looks. However, I did get lucky since I wanted to illustrate my point, and for a small burst of time, we actually get a bounce between 46 and 47 frames per second. I don't know why they use a decimal point, since there is no, like, it doesn't seem to measure decimals, but it will measure screen tearing to a degree with those vertical lines on the graph, and then here it was actually measuring 46 to 47 FPS, but then it bounced back up to 60, and then it, it's doing all sorts of stuff because this is way too compressed for it to actually really get a good use out of it. But we're going to run it here on this ProRes file, and it should, in theory, have no trouble. You can adjust some of the colors of the graph. Like I said, you don't have a whole lot of customization. And then you can adjust the text of what it's being captured from. So I'm going to call this Horizon Zero Dawn. Of course, choose like a game name or the capture device. You can change some precision precision of the FPS text. And so one is the single decimal place. I don't know what would happen if I set it to zero. I'm going to try that just to get rid of the decimal since it doesn't actually utilize it. And then down here, the writer size and width, you have preview size, which you want to keep fairly low so that it's not using a whole lot of your resources while it's encoding the file to show you the preview. But this uh, writer width is what the final size will be. So that will be determined in theory, unless you just want to, you know, kind of shrink the video. You want this to match what your source file is. So since I'm using a 3840 by 2160 file, that's what I'm going to write it to. And we're going to try this. FPS Precision Zero. I don't know that it will work. Once you have your config ready to go, then you simply run TR Drop C. And it looks like it's given me an error because of that FPS Zero command. Yep. So we need to go back in here. Oh, I'm an idiot. I left it as hcd.mp4. That file doesn't exist. It's hcd.mov. All right, try one more time here. There we go. And as you can see, once it starts up the video, it will start counting up from zero frames per second until it reaches whatever frame rate it thinks the video is at. And it's literally frame counting one at a time until it gets to the list. Now you will notice this chart is set to 60 FPS because the file header, it, the video itself is recorded at 60 FPS, but you can see that it detects that this video game runs at 30 frames per second. So it's actually ma managed to count up to 30 and it is checking every frame and every other duplicate or every other frame is a duplicate frame. Therefore, it is counting it as 30 FPS, which is accurate. Now this is going pretty slow because it's a very bulky 4K file. And like I said, it is HDR, so it's gonna look super washed out here and I'm recording at the same time. It's a short clip, but it goes through and it adds this graph overlay and then you can use that to help analyze frame rates of certain files, which I have found incredibly useful for just little details side to side. I wish there was a way to uh, analyze compressed sources a little bit better, but unfortunately you have to do your own frame counting for that. Um, I do want to see if anyone wants to help me with this. I want to develop an After Effects Expressions template or however that is made where I can take an actual frame rate and input like numbers up to a certain point and generate a graph like this. Because for certain analyses I want to do, I would love the visual but I'd have to frame count myself. And so I'd have to just basically flag, like I'd, I'd need to enter like, I guess ones and zeros with ones being new frames, zeros being duplicate frames. And then it analyzes that into a frame rate. I guess that would be the easiest way to go. Anyway, side tangent. This is a really cool tool. Use it for frame rate analysis. It's nowhere near as complex or as thorough or accurate as the tools that someone like Digital Foundry have developed. But for a free open source project, it is really neat and it has come in really handy. Like I said, you just need to transcode the files afterwards and make sure you have uncompressed or lossless, you know, as lossless as you can possibly get source files because it will not work well for just things recorded in a quick MP4 from OBS. If anyone wants to improve the project, it is open source. You can contribute. 
They are super busy right now. That this is not something they're working on full time, so they don't do a whole lot of updates. But if you you can probably contribute, or and if you do, if you make something better for it, please let me know in the comments because I would love to cover updates to this because this is a really cool software, and I love supporting open source formats. This here, real quick, shows the writer size. If you wanted to compress the video, you can set it to 100 by 100 and just get a pixelated mess. There is an example of the triple as well. You can just like run frame rates across each other. So we could actually test that real quick and see what it looks like in the preview. So I'm going to go ahead and use control C, which is the command to cancel this. It's not going to go through, but it's almost done. All right, that is finished. So now we are going to open up the triple, tri -tri 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 triple uh, config here. And you see here, you now have three different input files and it's going to output to a triple. So we have HCD2, HCD1, and we need to bring in another uncompressed file that I'm going to dig up really quick. Actually, I'm going to use an OBS recorded MKV just to show you the, uh, the, the pitfalls of it. So I'm transcoding here really, really fast. And I'm going to drag because as you can see here, it says the frame rate is 1000 FPS, which will totally screw it up. Okay. So for input files, we have hzd.mov, hzd2.mov, and then we have obs.mp4. Now there is no reason to necessarily do just like completely different games, but for now we'll do this. I don't know why it wants to do the divx codec for that other than just like an example. That's bizarre. Same pixel difference, most of that stays the same. Text locations, you can change where it starts. Okay, here we go. So first video, we'll call this HCD. We'll call that HCD2, just so we know which is which. And then this is an OBS recording, so we'll call that OBS. And then writer size, actually we'll just go ahead and do 1080p since this is a really weird thing. So then we run. So I'm sure what you can do is run it from a command line and run it with the triple YAML, like a flag to say that. I'm actually going to just rename this dash O for original, and I'm gonna rename, I'm gonna make a copy of the triple and rename it just trdrop dash config so it loads that by default. Like I said, I'm sure if you're running this from a command prompt, you could just tell it which file to use, trdrop. It's gonna run triple, and now we have side-by-side -side games as it counts up the frame right here one at a time. We've got Horizon Zero Dawn, another copy of Horizon Zero Dawn, and that is Quake Champions running on OBS at PC. Now this is probably maintaining a locked 60 FPS, but this would not be an accurate confirmation of that because like I said, the compression artifacting from OBS and X264 and Eamvink especially is going to trick it into thinking every frame is a new frame, but this is really cool. Now, I did want to provide one more example that I'm not going to run through the code, but of what it looks like. And that is when I was playing Unreal Tournament, since the way that it works involves frame counting, when I was playing Unreal Tournament 2004, if I sit still, the frame rate tanks because nothing is moving in frame and it was easy enough to compress that it literally thinks, like this game is running ridiculously fast. It's captured again at the 46, 47 FPS mark, which it's kind of detecting here. But then when I stop moving, it just drops the frame rate to zero because until something happens, it thinks nothing's happening in the frame. So you gotta be careful about your sample choices if you're using this for a video because sitting still with no movement in the frame is going to tell it that the frames aren't updating so you don't have an active frame rate, like here. It's like, wait a minute, nothing's happening. So just wanted to provide that example. Link to this software will be in the description down below. Please, 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 again, if you, come up with improvements or anything like that that I mentioned in the video, leave me a comment down below. Hit the like button with next to that link. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more awesome tech content and cool tools like this. Be sure to join our Patreon where you can support free tech education. And I'll see you next time.